Hey guys, so folks here. Uh, I want to do question and answer series four. This is uh, basically, you know, just kind of repeating some of the things people have asked. But, you know, I want to go through what you've asked and, and do my best to really help you guys out. So some of the people ask, you know, how does uh, crit strike work? You know, there seems to be multiple ways for, you know, damage. Um, does it matter when you raise that critical strike number? You know, we even talk about armor pin, things like that. Is it a percentage? The truth is, is they change it so much, we really can't uh, give you one set thing and say, here it is, because it changes all the time. It's it's never the same. Um, they make adjustments to the game, and suddenly everything that we've known is no longer how it works. Um, and so, you know, that's one of those things where I can answer some questions, but know this, that it's going to change um, in time. So... Here's, here is this kind of uh, how it's going and how it doesn't work. When you get that crit number, as it goes up, it's a, it's a hard number, but it's kind of like a percentage, but it's not. So obviously, the more you get, the better the chance is for you to crit. Now, they don't do percentages for obvious reasons because it's easy to say, oh, I've got 80% crit, which everybody goes, oh, no, that's, that's too high. He's going to kill me. Um, I had a battle. Uh, I wished I could have recorded, but I wasn't. I was doing a crusade, and my mirror on that server was just killing everyone. I mean, she was critting for 100,000 damage plus. Um, gold star, level 89. Just It was just killing the back line when I'd use her ult. It would just bam, one hit him and dead. And so uh, it was pretty amazing. And she's got great crit stats. So um, as that crit number goes up, it helps. Now, it's kind of like the two hit, you know, number when somebody says, oh, I'm adding a hundred to hit. What that does is help to not have your attack dodge. So it starts to compare dodge values and your to hit numbers. And that helps determine whether or not someone dodges the attack or someone doesn't dodge the attack. Obviously, some numbers are percentages. Some numbers are just straight um, points. Obviously, if I'm getting 25% bonus to dodge, and I have 100 dodge, then I've got 125. But if I've got 100 dodge and I get 100 points to my dodge, well, then I've got a 200 dodge. So you can kind of see how percentages really depend on what my base dodge is to begin with or my base to hit or any of those other things. Uh, kind of same way with crit, all those other things. So it, it it's one of those things where everything gets taken into account. It's all ran by a, an, a, a number that they come up with. Um, so I'm going to pull up here, we'll pull up Mira just because I've got Mira and I like Mira. So let's look here. So her hit level is 769. Um, her crit level is basically about 200. Um, you know, if I go to a tank and I look at, let's say, um, Kaiser or Sealy, either one of those, um, you know, his dodge level is 380. So sitting here, he's about 100. So I've got a higher chance of hitting because his dodge chance is below my um my to hit but you know again you see here on on her she's got a higher dodge so i might miss her more because she might dodge it then you start to factor in things like the captain skills and stuff like that so kind of hopefully that helps you um a little bit with them uh, i was asked by puffy guy you know hey is leon not any good some people like him i think he's a, a good tank he's an off tank he's not a main tank um, if he can stay alive, he can really get pretty big and help out. He's also useful against backliners. He will taunt. Um, so when those guys get to your backline, like your Yuan, like your um, Smoke, um, even Chavez sometimes gets to the backline, he'll taunt them back to him. So he does have some uses. Um, in fact, I've got him five-starred. Um, basically, uh, he's getting close. And um, I, I, I just can't run that many guys. I mean, that's that's the issue. You've got to pick somebody to go with. The majority of people, if you're playing with free heroes, are going to run a Kaiser or they're going to run a... Um, where's my Chavez? I was like, I know I got you guys. A Chavez or a Jacob. Um, some are going with the Poulon. Some are going with the Lori. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity out there to pick and choose, but you have to pick. Um, so it's really kind of hard. I've got um, this question. Is it really that Chavez has the best stats overall? Um, including legends, um, you know, one on one, he is, you know, supposedly the the best um, without him being able to use his ult. The answer to that question is, you know, let's say we take our tanks and we put them inside the alliance duel, and we let them go at each other, 
and we say, oh, he lived or he died, and now we're factoring in B-Souls, we're factoring in rune cores, we're factoring in prayers, we're factoring in what equipment you chose. Truth be told, Chavez can survive a lot, because once that ult pops, unless you interrupt it right when he casts it, he's going to heal, and he's going to buff his team with magic resist. Um, he heals very well. He's got a stun. He's got an AE. He does good damage. I mean, he's a good tank. Now, would I say he's the best tank out there over legendaries even? You know, I, I'm going to say he's a great tank. I can't say he's the best tank, but he's definitely in the top three, I would say most would agree. Um, Jacob has some great usage, but, you know, silence or one thing shuts him down real quick. Obviously, he's got that loading period, which makes it a little easier to know when he's going to do it and to stop it. Um, Chavez just kind of goes, hey, I'm going to pray. Whoop, look at me. Ha, ha, ha. And you're out of luck. Um, you know, Kaiser's uh, pretty good, especially with his ability to heal his own teammates, to taunt the, the knockback. Um, bonus and dodge. Poulon's coming in, man. He's getting an awakening. It's going to basically, um, when he gets... Uh, real low, or I can't remember if it's real low, or if I'd have to find the notes again, but basically he's going to ice block like Mia, or however you say her name, from uh, Overwatch, and he's going to heal in that time, can't be targeted, and then poof, pops out, look at me, I'm, I'm ready to go again. So uh, he got a little uh, little love coming up in the next few patches. Um, so I can't answer that, you know, but he's, he's, he's a great tank. Chavez is a great tank. Um, Soulstone Wish... I haven't figured it out. We're waiting to see how it goes down. Basically, it looks like they only added Rams. It doesn't look like anyone else has moved to the um, free ro not free rotation. Oh, that'd be awesome, free rotation. It doesn't look like anyone's shifted up here. So it just may be an extra week's added, and Rams is now there. Um, until we see the full time period go by, until Rams comes back again, which is going to take about a month. We don't know. Um... Another question was asked, what do you think about Blaine's ult? Is it too strong because it silences the entire team? Doesn't matter where he casts it. It hits the entire battlefield. Only damages those that are underneath the actual silence. Um, you know, do you think it's too strong? Because really the only counter to him is a guy most people don't run, which is Gridlock. Um, unless you're specifically fighting him. You know, what do, what do you think about that? And, and my answer to that is his his ultimate is, is amazing. Um, for a free hero, it can change the course of a battle. But because of his positioning, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. He is a little squishy, does have a little lifesteal thing. It's not too bad. Given his um, first orange item, which adds um, equipment here, which adds energy. A lot of guys will boost this up all the way to max it. So that they can really take advantage of an early ultimate to try and lock down that other team. Um, you know, he, he is a strong guy. Do I think it's game-breaking? Do I think it's um, too powerful? No. Uh, you can build teams that can manage through the silence, you know. And a lot of times those are auto-attackers. Guys like that that don't have to use their skills. Um, guys that are tanked. You know, I mean, it's just based all on team composition. Now, yes... A Blaine Ultimate at the right time will kill your team. And nothing you can do about it. Uh, I fought many battles like that. And it is what it is. Um, so, I don't know. It's one of the reasons why when I don't run a Blaine, I'll ban Blaine in the tournament. Because I know how painful it can be and I'd just rather not deal with it. Um, somebody says, you know, is it worth saving shovels before you start the Abyss? Uh, basically what happens is, and I'll go here to my Abyssal Treasure... When this time runs out, you have two options. You can continue to spend um, through here. And I'm just digging because I'm in the Abyss Treasure and, and why not. And and I'm going to pull up my timer in a second. Oh, smash that guy. Here we go. One, two. I'll just cut over here. So it's going to be five hours and 41 minutes. This ticks off basically um, in the same time frame. So every, I think it's eight hours, you get nine uh, shovels. I could theoretically end this. Some guys say if it's not a rare one, just go ahead and end it. You know, my personal opinion is that's up to you. But I don't ever start a new one um, until I have max shovels. Sure, I could start it, finish it um, earlier because it's not a rare. But to me, it's just it's just too much of a hassle. Um, especially since I, I do this on three different servers. 
I play on two, and then I ran the other one to uh, show how they were messing up um, and lying about these numbers still. Uh, you know, that's up to you. Now, I'm going to say this. You know, there's 14 chests here, it says right now. I, I could tell you there's not. There's um, maybe five more. And I, even though I can't see them here on the map, well, there's one, one of the five. There might be another somewhere. Do I see any more? Do I see any more? No, I don't see them. So somewhere on this map. But anyways, I, I wouldn't worry about, you know, I save up the shovels just because it's um, something to do. Another question that came up was, how do you transfer an account to another person? Each person binds their account. Um, when you click on it here, you know, how you bind your account. Um, it gives you options. It can be via Google Play. It can be via Facebook page. It can be via the um, Apple um, account. In fact, if you look here under your quest, you can bind your account to a Google Play. Any of those work. Now, if you want to switch this between platforms, the easiest way to do that is to bind it to a Facebook account. So if you're wanting to give your account to somebody else, the easiest thing to do is make a fake Facebook account, log into your game, click on here, go to the account, click unbind account. It's going to say, are you sure you really want to do this? Because if something happens, the program gets deleted from your phone, you may no longer have access to it. And you say, I'm willing to take that risk. And then you say, hey, I want to bind this account. It's going to say, what do you want to bind it to? You say, I want to bind it to a Facebook account. And it's going to say, what account do you want to bind it to? That's when you enter in your new made up Facebook account, type in the credentials, it'll bind it to that account. And then you give whoever you want that login information. Uh, Facebook may require you to verify that it's really you, especially when it's around the world. Uh, so like with the Guru account that I gave away, or he gave away and I, I just kind of gave out. Um, because he was on the other side of the world that wanted to verify when I try to log into his account, hey, is this really you or somebody hacking you? And so he had to be like, no, this is really me back home at his home computer, and then I could access it. Likewise, when the person that won it got it, I had to do that for them and say, no, no, that's really them on my computer, and so then they could access it. But that's how, that's, that's the easiest way to give away uh, an account. Um, what about uh, the boost totem in general? Um, you know, the boost, the boost totem is, is really one of those kind of cool things. I, I use it. Uh, I'm going to pull it up here. Basically, um, I have, I have higher on another account. I'm going to have to look here. Where's that? Talent. Boop, boop, boop. So I've got a level two boost totem. Obviously it's not very high here. Um, currently it's, it's, uh, you know, giving me. Uh, let's do this. I need two more. Sweep. 50, 100. Sweep. Sweep more. Yay. All right. Now we can go here. So I'm going to put it up to level three. I upgrade it. So now um, on this level three here, it uh, raises the attack and the ability power. It doesn't tell you. Um, marksman. Coco. Skills. Boost totem. It doesn't tell you. Nobody knows for sure how much it's going to do. Um, there it is. You know, and the answer is I don't know. And nobody's told me the exact numbers. It, it varies from different one to different one. Some say, oh, the first one's like a hundred. Oh, the second one's three hundred. I'm like, how do you know that? You you can't measure those statistics inside the game. Um, maybe you've got a program that's. You're running a memory editor. You found the the variable that it's, it's I mean, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of debate. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Oh, I keep forgetting to upgrade this. There we go. Um, so I, I don't know that answer. Um, if somebody tells you they know exactly, unless they're a developer, um, uh, that's your call. Uh, items with Kaiser, you know, items with Kaiser, that's a lot of uh, debate. Uh, obviously, I want to go to Tank here. My Kaiser, I'm working on his Awakening right now. A lot of people that I know, until they hit the orange, um, usually run the Sapphire Scepter just because he gets more magic resist, um, as well as ability power. I know a few that run that all the way. Uh, a lot of people use the Eye for Eye. Um, you know, and this is one of those one tough ones. When should I use it? You know, a lot of people don't use it till the very end um, when he's kind of left standing uh, to do damage. And sometimes I've seen a few victories that way 
especially in the in the uh, the ladders where it's come down to the very end and I popped it at the end. The guy's hit me and I'm doing damage to him and I pull off a, a Kaiser win. Um, you know, and out here basically, uh, ethereal shield, some people might do this. Um, you know, but again, if you're an orange two, you know, these are really your two top choices. So it's, it's up to you. The majority of people, again, are going to run purple one. Um, outside of that, it's a personal preference in the oranges, uh, depending upon what you can get to. Um, people ask me, you know, what does Coco's Awakening do to a Dodge team? Uh, it, it doesn't do a ton. It, it does some. Um, where's Coco at? Come here, boy. Come here. Skill. So, what we're looking at is, um, before it starts, he increases damage. He reduces their armor by a good chunk and then reduces their dodge by 34%. So, what's he doing? He's taking away the whole, uh, um, Taking away the whole dodge of the, the captain skills, basically. Uh, you know, is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. But, you know, you're only counting on that when you're facing dodge teams. It works great against non-dodge teams just because it does damage. Uh, but a lot of people are going to kind of forego Coco right now and really shoot for the Wings of Origin um, team that you're seeing that, that are crit strikes. Uh, best legend, best legend is Vortex. 99% people are going to say because the damage is crazy. The damage is insane. Um, fits the majority of situations. So, I don't know, but that's probably what I would say. Uh, there's always that debate about that three-star Vortex. Is a three-star Vortex worth it? My answer is yes. But my other, my other problem I have is, you know, is it worth investing if you've got gems, uh, and you got a three-star vortex. Is it better to invest a ton of gems to try and pray him up? Well, you know, I, I don't know. You know, you look at uh, Dragon Prayer. Let's go to my vortex here. To get a four-dot vortex is going to take a crap ton of gems, and it, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but I could spend those gems hoping to get him five-starred. And, and see boost to his health already. See, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And he still would be good even at a two, great, you know, three star. Um, so I don't know. That's that's a difficult question. I think he's got a lot of play. Um, he still does a lot of damage. He just doesn't have the same survivability uh, that a five star Vortex has. If you get him, use him. I mean, run him. You'll love him. You'll be like, whoo. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. I've got a son with a four star. Uh, he blew all his gems and got Vortex. And then flew up in the arena got a ton of um gems from the arena because he had vortex and still does well against a lot of guys that have great teams but they just can't beat vortex so you know what i'm saying uh people ask what about salmon what teams you fit into that's not really something i can answer a ton in only because i don't use him he's silver star but i don't use him um his skills are pretty phenomenal uh for what he does <coughs> excuse me the damage that he does um Dealing continuous damage, increasing the attack speed and the ability power of your team, um, increase the ability power of all the teammates every 10 seconds, um, and then cast this really cool um, wind bombs in a fan shape. A lot of people use them for crystal dungeon stuff. Uh, you could throw them on a, an, an AD team where you want the attack speed bonuses, or you could put them on an AP team. I mean, it's really kind of one of your choices. I've known a few guys that threw him. Um, where is he at? There he is. On a Baggins team. Uh, basically running the Baggins uh, Awakening bullet time. So you've got a, a, a Baggins. You've got a Salmon. And then um, then they were running. Where is it at here? Bullet time. And then they're usually running like a Mira. And uh, I know a few that have run Sue uh, with well. Some have run Pandras. And then a Tank. And that's kind of what they did um, for that attack speed plus the bullet time damage. It's, it's just, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, it's just thinking about that. But I don't know. I really haven't done that. Um, when you collect essence fragments for awakening quests and you decide, you know, change the quest, did the uh, fragments go away? Um, let's look here in your bag. Um, materials. They're not in there. Not in soul stones. Not in equipment. If, if I don't see them in a readily available um, area, I would be kind of hesitant to cancel the quest. I've never done it. Um, nobody I know has ever done it, so I don't know. So I'd be careful canceling those quests on the off chance they do disappear 
and you have to get all those fragments again. Um, totems do get a little bit more health as they go up. They become a, a higher power totem. Um, so that's one of the good uses against like a team with a, a Yuan or smoke uh, is to, to stop them and do that. Um, again, the question if, you know, if one team has a Nightmare Beast Soul, does a crit debuff stack? So if um, all five guys had that, would that, you know, and they all were 8%, would it then be a, a, a negative 40%? I don't know. And there's no way to measure that. And you can say, well, I've ran 100 battles. It looks like they crit less. Well, are they critting 40% less? I mean, because some battles I get no crits. And then some battles, like I had one battle where Mira three shot the backliners. Bam, bam, bam with crits. I mean, it was just insane. I don't know. Um, anybody, again, that says they do know, you know, unless they're a developer, I, I honestly couldn't answer that question. Um, you know, it's, that's just a tough one. Sorry, it's a long video, but a lot of people had questions. Uh, a lot of people talk about that idea of the Lone Dog team. I've mentioned it before. I like York. Um, you know, now now there's a lot of good opportunities. Um, where are you at? Oh, come on, York. There you are. I gold starred him on my other server. Um, you know, skills down here uh, basically increases attack damage for these heroes, and he got a buff to that. So suddenly on this Lone Dog team, you know, you look at some of the people that he's got here. It's crazy, especially if you do the um, Orange 2 item with these guys. You know, you could really do some major damage. Here's one, two, three guys right there that are going to run that that item. Um, sorry about that. I'm going to cancel that call. And um, just kind of go from there. Uh, you know, so it does pretty good. Skeleton Scepter does stack. So if you have Alma and Blaine together... It does stack, um, so that's kind of useful in that. Uh, and that's kind of really about it. I hope this helps you guys. If you've got any other questions or specifics, I'll gladly answer them in next week's question and answer. Uh, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, again, this is just from the knowledge that I know from what I've played and the people I talk to. If you think you know something better, I'm not going to say any different, so feel free to comment and share your thoughts. I hope you all have a great one. I uh, will talk to you all later. Looking forward to your questions for next week.